All right, I think we're up and running. Give us about one minute here to do some admin work, and we are going to be hitting the hitting the races here. One second. I'm on the race. Do you see it on here? All right, we got some people joining. How is everybody doing? All right, we are good to go. All right, how's everybody in the Facebook world doing out there? My name is Grant Sorensen. I am the host of Superior Angling. Today we are on the water here in the immediate Duluth area. Let's turn the camera. There you can see the Duluth hillside. I'm sure a few of you may be out in your boats here watching this right now, but uh, we're right along Park Point. And we are gonna be doing some trolling here in shallow. Um, it is, again, it's pretty early in the year yet. So early April and we do have some salmon in the in the in the neighborhood, but fishing has been a little bit more on the tough side. Um, it's uh, I don't know our bite just really hasn't totally kicked off yet. We are getting a few fish here and there, but uh, we're still the the days ahead are going to be a lot better. Um, but right now we are uh, seeing a few fish here and there. But we just got out here. We're going to get some lines in the water and get the trolling. So we're going to keep this interactive. You guys can uh, what, write write comments, ask questions. Um, I don't know. Fishing's been a little bit on the on the tough side, so we may not uh, catch anything. But you never know. It's a beautiful day out here in Duluth. The sun is shining. The winds are light. The waves are non-existent, so you can't complain much at all. So um, yeah, feel free to uh, type any comments. We're gonna get some baits in the water and kind of show you what we're doing here and get the trolling away. So let's get our kicker motor down. So right now we're starting off in about. 13 feet of water, pretty shallow right now. This time of year, it seems like staying shallow produces uh, more fish, but you never really know. So we're just gonna throw our kicker motor down there. So we have our big Verado 350 Verado 15 horse Mercury Pro kicker. Um, we're gonna troll with the kicker motor, but if you guys uh, have audio issues, by all means, let me know and we'll drop the ball mount and troll with that to reduce uh, background noise. But we'll fire up the kicker motor for now and if it does become a bothersome, let me know. There we go. Text it inside. What is that? Okay. All right, we are good. Put us in gear here. Can you guys type questions? I don't know. Someone type a question. Test this sucker out. We're going to get some baits in the water here. We got Aaron and Caden with us today. We're kind of just running straight straight mono in terms of lures like anything anything bright colored like got a long a there we got some scatter wraps going out that's a phantom dagger looking good that right there is weapon city man let me tell you day in day out year in and year out that bait right there is hot I don't know if people can type the comments. Oh, per why am I not seeing comments on mine? There you go. Okay, oh boy. I uh, got a little backlog of questions here, boys. Give me a second here. I'm 
looking at it on another phone. I gotta figure out how to see comments on my phone. Hannah, yay, thank you. You are welcome, Hannah. Brad looks like fun. Brian, water temp. Water temp right now, 39.1. So pretty, uh, getting getting kind of nice. Getting a little bit warm. Better than the 36, 37, which it was in the weeks previously. Audio is good. Thanks, Chad. I appreciate it. Samuel, what's your go-to early season stick bait for Lake Superior Cohoes? That scatter wrap I showed you right here is definitely it. Like that's that's a heck of a bait. But I'm digging the colors on these new Phantom daggers. Like that's a good-looking bait too that I know it's going to produce. But that uh, jointed scatter wrap is is dial. Like that's a that's a great bait. What are we targeting? All right, so we are in the immediate Duluth area targeting kind of anything that bites. You know, there's a lot of uh, salmon around, coho salmon around this time of year. Our, we do get a few Chinooks here and there, but they haven't really uh, showed up yet. Um, so I'm primarily coho salmon. If we do catch a fish today, I presume it's gonna be a coho or a lake trout. So those are kind of the two main species of fish that are in here, so. Um, for those of you guys that fish Lake Superior, I'm sure you're familiar with what we're doing, but I'm few, sure there's a few of you on here who are not familiar with this area. So uh, very western part of Lake Superior. Salmon is open year round. Um, our lake trout opened up back in January. So we're able to fish out here. A lot of our inland lakes still have ice in them or ice on them, but uh, our landings have been open here for quite a while now. So we're able to get out here in a boat and troll. So we're trolling high up in the water column for salmon and lake trout. Chuck, hello Chuck. Can't hear the motor, that's good. Yeah, and we're gonna use an inline planer boards today. So again, if it was like just myself out here in the boat, I would uh, be kind of just probably long lining the two planer boards just because they're really, or long lining the two rods just because there really be really no uh, purpose in using planer boards. But since we've got three guys, two lines per person, we can use planer boards to spread them out, get them away from the boat a little bit and hopefully get them in front of a, a fish. But it's just kind of your regular same boards I use for walleye fishing we're using for uh, trout and salmon. Later in the year, when we use leghorn snap weights, we use the, uh, the bigger offshore boards, like these big, big daddies right there. That's what we use when we're trolling like lead and snap weights and such. But this time of the year, these smaller boards work well mud line yet um there's really not a huge defined mud line that we've seen over by down by wisconsin there is a little bit more of a prominent mud line but here on the Duluth side it's just kind of your kind of your river water color around here and then as you get up towards like 21st avenue east it clears up a little bit but kind of more of a muddy or like a rivery water color right now i always judge it a good judge by uh, looking at water clarity is to look at your kicker motor um and you can really judge the uh look at the color of the prop and if you can see you know you can see the see the prop you're in pretty good water so yeah that's decent decent looking water there um i don't like it crystal clear but if you can't see your prop you're in pretty uh pretty muddy water where you might be hurting your chances at catching a fish. I'm having a look at comments on this other phone. Um, <laughs> John Jones likes blaze orange for coal. Yeah, that's a, that's a great color. Let's take a look. Let's go over some other baits that uh, work well. There's a couple good looking ones in there. What else do we got? There's those phantoms, those are good baits. 
But yeah, like your scatter apps here work well. There's the hot steel, which is my favorite color. Brad's baits, kind of known around Duluth here, are pretty good. Bomber's put on some cool colors recently. But again, these are all like four and a half inch, four and a half inch baits, which kind of the whole forage base around here right now is smelt. Our smelt are uh, going to get ready to run here pretty soon. And, you know, your average smelt is, I don't know, three, four inches long. So these, these are more like longer minnow style uh, baits versus more of a shad type bait. So I, I prefer that little three and a half to four and a half inch length on, on baits. No fish yet, Kitten? Uh, yeah. How's our speed? 2-1, going a little bit slow. Let's try to bump her up to 2-2, two, 2-3. Two, two, Steven went one for three this morning in the same area, all on orange. Yeah, it's been, I don't know, fishing has been a little bit more on the tough side. I'll be the first to admit that around here in, in the Duluth area. So um, a few days ago we filmed a couple shows, but we were on the Wisconsin side where it has been a little bit better down there. But Duluth is going to pick up any day now. Like, it's bound to happen. It's... I don't know, you just gotta put it in perspective that it's still early April, but we do get a really good bite in Duluth here, but it just hasn't popped off quite, quite yet. It's gonna, it's gonna soon, but I don't know. Tomorrow looks nice and warm, but I don't like that weather next week. It looks like it's gonna cool down again, so we may be delayed, but peak bite is still, I think it may be another couple weeks out, but you never know. You can't catch them if you're not out here trying. Chuck, what access did you use? We went out of the uh, high bridge um, down by UPS. McQuaid's open as well, so probably doesn't matter this time of year. You're... What access do you use? Both are open and both have uh, plenty of room. Docks aren't in though down by UPS, so. What length and action rods? That is a great topic of conversation. The rods that we use, so those are St. Croix icons. We got a mix of the seven and a half footers and the eight and a half footers. Um, I, I, I love the icons just because it's a rod that we've caught anything from. I mean, they can handle, we walleye fish with them, we salmon fish with them, we fish big lake trout on them so the uh, icons from st croix i mean it's a great all-around trolling rod you know it's right around that hundred dollar range 110 i think retail is on them but they can do it you can use them for everything like they can handle five colors of lead and the eight ounce snap weight in a big planter board or they can you know you're fine running just a stick bait on straight mono like they're such a versatile rod that you can use for every application of of fishing um you know we've caught in we've got 30 40 pound trout on them and we've got 20 inch walleyes and you know they're just a great all-around rod that uh we use for trolling pretty much every time we're out what else do we got here joey do you ever troll with leeches yeah, you know, if you're a, especially if you're a go to San Scalasca, and I hear they like leeches out here. Inline planter boards. And then in terms of like line fishing line. Let's go over some fishing line. What do we got? That's good stuff right there. That'll put you in the money. That's good stuff there too. 
What else do we got? There, you got three different types of lion here. We got mono, mono, and floral. This new Suffolk Advance. I think it's a new floral, but I first time I've used it, and it is. I'm pretty impressed. It's a very nice fluorocarbon. Um, but this regular like 15 pound test suffix superior mono is what we use on all our trolling rods this time of year just running straight mono Wade, so you stagger the eight and a half and seven and a half foot rods. Um, yeah, I mean, typically I, I like to run like eight and a halfs on all my boards, and then I use a seven and a half for seven, that seven and a half foot icon is an absolute stunner of a downrigger rod. Like it is perfect. You get tons of great fight out of a fish on a downrigger. So I, I like that seven and a half foot length for uh, my downriggers, but. Um, you know, I mix a few in on the planer boards as well. So typically, you know, your outside board and your middle board, if you're running three on each side, the, you know, your top two would be your eight and a half footers and your bottom one would be your seven and a half. But, you know, it, it varies throughout the day. There's really no particular order. That eight and a half can handle a little bit more weight on it than the seven and a half can though, so. So this guy right down here, that little guy hanging out, Horizontally, he's our wild card lead core with a spoon rod for hopefully Mr. Brown Trout that's going to swim by. We are starting to see quite a few browns up in this area. Um, pretty much all the stocking is is done from down in Wisconsin, um, down in like the Bayfield, the Possible Islands area. They are stocking the browns heavy, and the fishery's really taken off. We're starting to see some really, really big browns into that I don't know 33, 34 inch range. Even I mean, very, very big fish. And they are starting to, like, these browns travel everywhere. They're kind of a, I don't know, a fish that really has no boundaries and no limits. Um, we see them up here in Duluth. People are seeing them up the North Shore. Uh, my buddy Tori caught one up in Canadian waters of Lake Superior. Like, I mean, uh, Wisconsin brown. So they really put on some miles and swim everywhere. They're seeing them over in the Keweenaw. Like, these browns are putting on a ton of ton of miles so i mean that's good they're a good they're a great fish to catch they're gorgeous they're good eating um but that guy right there he's he's set up for our brown All right, trying to catch on, catch up on some comments here. Do you ever fish dodger and flies in the spring for salmon like on Michigan? Good question. Would it catch fish? Of course it would. Like anything can catch a fish, right? I, oh, big ship coming through. Watch out. Hear that thing's horn? I don't know if you can hear that or not. Us walleye boats don't stand a chance against one of those ships. All right, where was I? Um, can it catch fish? Yes, it can definitely. Anything can catch a fish. My theory is you put anything in front of a salmon at the right time, a salmon's going to bite it or a lake trout's going to bite it. Like, I don't know, you could put like a hook on my boot and put it in front of a hungry fish and it's going to eat it if you're in the right place at the right time. Um, I just, I just use kind of what I have more confidence in and what I prefer to use. Like, I don't know, just running like stick baits on straight mono is a super simple presentation. It's lightweight. There's not a whole lot of gear and drag and, you know, resistance out there. It's a fun fight. Um, and I just feel like you have the highest percentage of, you know, catching, catching fish. And, you know, additionally, your fish are so high up in the water column right now, like in the top, like two, three, four, five, six, seven feet. Um, again, don't get me wrong, there's fish down deep and suspended as well, but the majority of them are up, up higher and, you know, running a flasher and a fly, you're going to have to get it down somehow and a lot of times you're going to get it down past the fish. So, you know, running these thick baits 120 feet back behind the boards, I know that they're down there six, you know, about six feet or so.
Again, John, what depth are you normally running your baits this time of year? Yeah, again, top top of the water column, three, four, five, six, seven feet. You can see the water clarity there. Not crystal clear, but not a mud. There's really not a big mud line out of Duluth right now. Again, John, what depth are you normally running your baits this time of year? Yeah, again, top, top of the water column, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jake, what depth range do you like this time of year? I I really don't care about total depth. Like I could be out over, you know, two or three hundred feet, or I could be in twenty feet of total water depth. Again, from like the surface to the bottom of the lake. And again, I don't really care how deep I'm in. I more so care how deep my boat or my lures are are down. So um, again, you know, just trying to maintain that, you know, three to six, seven foot depth with my lures. And I'll just kind of, like, I could turn off my graph right now. I don't really pay attention to my graph too much this time of year. Um, it doesn't really do much for me. I think a lot of the stuff you see on your graph is debris and sticks and, you know, runoff from in the rivers and whatnot this time of year anyways. But, uh, yeah, I could pretty much turn off my graph because I don't really care what depth I'm in. Um, these fish these fish that are suspended don't relate to bottom structure. So, um, you know, with that being said, your structure this time of year is number one, water temp, number two, water clarity. Um, it could be a bug slick. It could just kind of be anything. It's not actual structure on the bottom of the lake. It's structure in terms of how that water is higher up in the water column. So total depth, I don't really care about. Look at the ship. I heard the Sioux locks are closed. I don't know if they open back up. I don't know where he's going. Caden says we got a few questions. Caden says we got questions. I tell Caden to catch a fish. Max, over the past two weeks, I've been marking tons of fish at 30 to 40 feet. My guess is they aren't fish, and it's more so probably balls of smelt or herring, or it could just be like a thermocline of some sorts or debris. Um, again, I don't trust my graph really at all this time of year just because there's so much going on in the water column between like dirty water, clean, clean water, um, smelt, bait. Like, you know, if they were fish and you dropped a downrigger to them, you know, they'd bite, right? So, I mean, that pretty much tells you that they're probably not not fish just sitting there waiting for a lure to get in front of them because you put a lure down there and they don't eat. So, my guess is they're probably smelt or some other type of bait fish. Aaron says we got action. Yeah, like... Look at that muller. Woofed. That's a. Let's see what she looks like on the down scan. Kind of underwhelming on the down scan, but that's definitely something. My guess is it is a. My guess is that's a uh, ball of smelt. Waiting to push up and go up on the, the beach there and do their smelt thing. That smelt do every April. Do you usually start at a specific speed at the start of the trip? I understand you adjust as the day goes on. Yeah, kind of. I kind of start any day, whether I'm trout fishing or salmon fishing. Um, I'll start at like 2.2, 2.3, which is just a great all around speed for no matter what kind of trolling you're doing. Um, whether it's walleyes or trout or salmon or whatever, like 2, 2, 2, 3, you can't go wrong. I'll start there and yeah, I'll, you know, do some, do some swings, do some curves. If I'm getting a bit on my outside on a left turn, I'm going to, you know, speed up or, you know, it's going to vary it a little bit and I don't always pay attention to how fast we're going, so. No fish. I'm gonna get tired of talking here pretty quick. We better better see a board go back. Nice little spread there.
What else you got going on in the comments section? I heard you mention running stick baits 120 feet back. What's the closest you'll run them behind a board? Closer, closer gets better bait action? Question mark. 120 feet is a good standard depth or not depth length to achieve like the to achieve like the dive curve of the best dive curve of the lure right like you put a bomber along a or a smithic rogue or something back 120 feet like it maxes out at you know seven six seven eight feet depending on what type of line you're using so you know um yes there are times that i'll put it back 60 70 80 feet behind the board but i always just start at start at 120 and again in my mind it's kind of my thinking the way i fish uh, you know for running these shallow diving baits if i put a i'm not gonna like all of a sudden have my baits out 120 not catch fish bring them in put them back 80 and start catching fish right like to me that just doesn't make sense and it's just more so would be more so the timing of your lure intersecting that active group of fish so um, i'm not a huge believer in like small little stuff like that when i troll out here but some people may and maybe they do switch it up and catch fish is why you know i mean great you know there's just there's no one right right way to catch a fish i don't care what type of species you're talking there's always a hundred ways to do it no one right way but you know kind of all my knowledge i'm sharing right now is just kind of what works for us and what we're most comfortable with all right we need a drink of water where'd my water go Oh, let's see what's in Caden's cooler. Right there in the... Oh, here we are. There we are. Got a few boats out here. All right, let's go fish. Why not a trolling mast instead of individual planer boards? That's a good question. Again, two styles of, of doing it. There's no one right way. I like the individual planer boards. Number one, just because we approach a style of fishing from more of a walleye perspective. I don't know if you can see this guy down here in that. Can't tell if that's a ranger or a skeeter, but he's got a mast out there. So again, he's essentially fishing the same way that we are. He has board or you know, essentially a planer board out with lures back there a little ways, but kind of two different styles of doing it. And I feel like with these planers you have more control. Um, there's no slack line, like with those bigger masts, like a fish hits it, the line comes out of the clip, and there's I don't know, two, three, four seconds of somewhat slack line. You don't get that with these inline planer boards. Um, these inline planer boards, I feel like you can have a better sense of if you get a piece of debris on there. Early season like this, there's a lot of junk in the water, you know, sticks, leaves, whatever. If one of my lures would hit one, hit a piece of debris, I would know it with my inline planer boards. With that planer board mast, I probably would not have any idea. Um, but there are downsides to these planter boards too. If we hook a 20, 30 pound lake trout right now, which there are, are probably a few around, I can guarantee you one of those boards will probably go underwater if that lake trout wanted to uh, swim down. So that is a downside. Again, you know, it's more, I don't know, it's just my approach to it. I feel like these are a little more simple to use. Um, and if you are in bigger waves, your rod tip can absorb the shock of you know, being in the big waves, whereas that planer board mast, it's, you know, a lot of jerking back and forth with, you know, your boat going through waves. There's no stretch in that line that you use to attach to your big board. So um, with, you know, with these smaller inline boards, the, you know, especially those eight and a half foot uh, icons can absorb like the, the shock of going through waves and it makes your bait run smoother.
whole lot of nothing on the graph right now, eh? 38 degree water, a little bit cooler. We might take a little turn to the left. Beautiful day though. So you can kind of see right now, I'm turning to the left so my boards on the right side of the boat are pulling a little bit harder. So they're going a little bit faster right now. So like, for instance, if one of these three boards would get hit right now, I'd know that, hey, maybe the fish do want a little bit faster of a speed. So little clues like that. Again, your first fish is always, uh, I don't know if you guys watch our episodes um, on YouTube and, and Facebook, we have a 30 minute TV show, but, uh, I always, you know, state out here at first fish is the hardest to catch just cause there's so many variables and conditions out here. You don't know what, uh, really what speed the fish want, what colors they want, what really anything. So you do struggle from time to time getting that first fish, but once you get that first one, it can usually, uh, can usually put a few more in the boat pretty quick. Can you run lead on the inline? Yes, great question. And here is a tip that comes from 100% experience that I've figured out all on my own. So the smaller boards, I don't know if that kicker motor audio is kind of loud. Let's go up front. All right, so here we got our two, two planter boards. Let me get some more props, one second. What else do we need? That's good. Okay. Two different styles of boards. I prefer this offshore brand. Um, this is a smaller one that you would use, like walleye style board. This is a bigger one. I think these are made for like musky guys, right? But um, they work great for lake trout fishing. The small board can run. You can hold four colors of lead core. Let all your lead out, attach, for instance, let's say a five ounce snap weight. This board can float that. I mean, that's a lot of weight. This board can handle it, although it's not gonna get out to the side very far. Like, you would not get this board out by my two outside boards there. It'd, be, it'd start dragging back towards the middle of the boat just because there's a lot of weight on it. This board here, this big daddy, he can handle seven colors of lead and a big, a big snap weight, let's say like 10 ounces. That board can handle it and that board's gonna get it better at getting it out away from the boat. So um, here's my snap weight box. Recent Menards purchase, it's actually pretty nice. I think like guys who roof and stuff, I think it's like for like nails and whatever, but hey, it works good for uh, snap weights. So here's our, you know, we've got a wide variety of weights like this big dog here is probably, it's probably a 10 ouncer. This is a five ouncer. You know, we just carry a variety of weights. I don't know, it's full of them in there. But uh, yeah, again, that's kind of talk for, you know, not this time of year for, you know, that's kind of like July, August talk there where kind of the whole premise around like lake trout are lake trout are very deep in the water column when uh, like, so when the water is very cold and water is very warm, the lake trout are going to be deep. When the wa lake water hits that sweet spot of, I don't know, 45 to 55, like then it's game on. Like your lake trout then move way up in the water column. But general rule of thumb, when your water is really cold and really warm, your lake trout are going to be deep. So all this snap weight talk that we were just doing, and that's for like when the water, when the lake trout are deep in July and August and September. Us 
What else do we got here? What brand tree rod tree do we have? Very observant and good question. So there's a bunch of different rod trees on the market today. And as you can see, we have Trax Tech bases. There's a base there. There's a base for our downrigger there. We have Trax Tech trees as well. That's our uh, four tree holder, which are a, a great product. However, these are another product as well. So we got a couple sets of these, but this is from Superior Welding and Marine. They are located in uh, the UP of Michigan, and it's a it's a great product. So we just started using them. Um, again, a similar similar you know platform as like a, a Trax Tech tree holder. A little bit less features, not as like physically heavy, but it's a great product. I mean, we've been putting it through the test here the past couple of weeks, and like it's it's holding up to our expectations very very well. It fishes well. Um, extremely like lightweight. Like the weight of it is light, which I like. They got a little tool tray here. Um, the best part about them is the price point. So hold it, you know, it's a whole different market than uh, Trax Tech would be. So, um, you know, you get two of these rod holders for like the four tree versions for right around 400 bucks, I believe. So, um, yeah, I mean, a great product. If you're looking to uh, get into, into trolling Superior Welding and Marine, you can check them out on, they have a Facebook page. These fish are being tough. For those of you that follow us, I don't have patience at all. Nice day though. Can't complain at all. Some days we troll, help the bomb won't um, steer us, but when it's calm like this, it's pretty, pretty easy to do it without. But if you do get wind and stuff picking up, it's nice to drop the bomb out and have that help steer. But we're doing good today without it. All right, like you're looking at that, like what would, what would that be? What would that be? What would that be? What would that be? That up there is like debris. I would not worry about him at all. These guys down here, I don't know. Maybe a smelt. Maybe could be a lake trout or who really knows like my guess is it's not even a lake trout because i could drop a downrigger ball down there right now and i guarantee you it won't bite so maybe i don't know it could be eel pout could be suckers could be really who knows again i don't trust my graph out here early season like this Come on, boys in blue, let's catch a fish. Thirty-eight degree water. Again, you get a. I'm looking like due west right now. You know, west wind is going to kind of peel that warm water out of here and keep it a little bit more on the cool side. Unfortunately, whereas on the contrary, an east wind would bring in the warm water, this west wind is kind of blowing it out. I still don't know why I can't see comments on my phone. How long do the fish usually stay close in like this? Good question. Um, I don't know, short answer is like, 
or I guess non-technical answer is like kind of all year in terms of like fish in general. But if we're talking, if we're talking salmon, um, I would say until mid June, then they're going to start to push out of here. So like, right. I wouldn't even, I shouldn't even say right now. I'd say in about a week or two through early June is kind of our peak time. Like you don't need to go far at all. You literally can like be right here towards right next to downtown Duluth and, and catch fish. You don't really don't need to travel. Come, you know, come late May, early June, you'll get a, you'll start to see some Chinooks around here, but then that water starts to warm up and all the fish kind of push up the shore that away towards Canada, towards Silver Bay, Grand Marais. That's where those salmon kind of go. Um, your water on Duluth here gets pretty stale and warm later in the summer, but you'll have lake trout around here kind of all year long. Down there, lake trout thing sitting on bottom. But our lake trout will move. They'll move up top here in the next month. They just need a little bit warmer, warmer water here. Who can name this lure? Throw it in the comments. Who can name that one right there? This guy. I'll be surprised. Name it. If anyone can name that. Name that How's fishing? If you just recently joined, fishing is tough, but it beats sitting at home doing yard work, right? This lead core needs to go. We need to see a brown on that thing. Wind is picking up a little bit. How's our audio? Leave us a comment if our audio is getting tough with the wind, but we should be okay still. getting cold holding the phone big old looper that'd be nice did anyone guess what that lure was no no guesses Rob says audio is still sounding good. Thanks, buddy. Is there much of a brown trout fishery on Superior? Good question. Uh, yes, there is, and it's only going to get better in the years to come. But it is—it's actually pretty strong right now. I would say it's—I don't know—it's pretty prominent, especially down in Wisconsin waters. Um, but we are starting to see some up here on, in Duluth. They—they um, they swim that so shore and come up this way um your browns don't really have a sense i don't know the catch ratio on like stocked browns to native browns is about 50 percent and your stocked fish kind of don't really have a sense of i don't know really anything like they they swim around and they don't really know which way's up which way's down but that's kind of good for us anglers because <laughs> you can uh you can catch them like they're swimming up into canada which is unbelievable like hundreds of miles across lake superior the brown trout goes so pretty dynamic and adventurous fish but yeah i mean the fishery is getting good they're starting to get big again i mean they don't really compete with lake michigan browns right but um for lake superior they are they're good i always say our our lake superior fish our, our salmon and, and browns won't compete with lake michigan but our, our lake trout are definitely bigger and prettier in my mind I like the taste of our fish too. Our fish aren't eating alewives, but those big Lake Michigan fish are definitely fun. Don't get me wrong. But 
Lake Superior fish are delicious to, to eat, especially our coho salmon. More stuff on bottom that I don't trust. Oh, Mark. Mark the shark, you got it. Ranowski. That's a good guess. Not many people know that bait. Heck of a walleye bait, especially in dirty water out here in Lake Superior. The old Ranowski. Hard to find. Is there a best time to be using these tactics from Jesse? Yeah, right now through the through early June. I see some different water color over there. I can't tell if it's from a cloud and the sun hitting it or or not, but we might venture on over that way. Looks like a mud cloud to me. Yeah. Looks like a mud cloud? Yeah. Cloud made of mud? That's where all the fish are. You ever fish Keweenaw Bay? We fish over by Keweenaw, but my problem when I'm over in that area is I always got to go to the middle of the, of the lake, and I rarely stay near shore. Um, Buddy Travis, who owns ProNav, it's a pretty cool GPS technology that you attach to your trolling motor. He lives over in that area and does very well fishing near shore um, in the Keweenaw area. So I know that that's a pretty good, pretty good fishery that persists over there. I don't spend a lot of time again near shore over there though. That could. That could maybe be a lake trout. Again, I have trust issues for my graph this time of year. Mike, what would be the number one piece of advice you give someone who's never fished Lake Superior for browns or whatever else would bite? I have the boat for it. Good question. What would my number one piece of advice be? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to use a certain lure. I'm not going to tell you to troll a certain speed. Because that all doesn't really matter. Um, it matters, but conditions change and vary so much out here. You, there's really no secret. Um, it'd probably just be to come out and, and do it. Um, just kind of have the confidence to go out and try, like, you know, use my guidelines of, you know, fishing high up in the water column and just go out and do it. You know, dedicate eight hours and say, you know, I, if I go out there and I don't catch a fish, I'm okay with it. But, you know, we're going to go out there and try to catch a fish and try to get that confidence built up you know it's all a all a confidence game i mean there's really but there's what's the worst that can happen right you come out here and don't catch a fish who cares right it's gonna probably happen to us today um and it, you know it happens more often <laughs> more often than one would think but you know just like put forth the risk allocate the time like it's you know beautiful that is a mud line there sorry for the interruption but that is a nice mud line um you know just just do it that's kind of what i would say like you're not going to come out here and you know do anything wrong right like put lines in the water and you never know what could happen like there could be a lake trout down there 30 feet and it could be the biggest trout of your life that could bite right like you never know um my, so yeah i guess my advice is just be to come out here and, and do it you know if you got the boat you got the gear you know you guys can use walleye rods use whatever you got i mean you could come out here with the zebco and uh you know four pound test mono and throw a rapala behind the boat and probably catch a salmon it can happen you know you don't need you don't need a bunch of fancy gear and whatnot it's just coming out here and doing it so that would be my biggest piece of advice
by the way, these striker adrenaline rain suits are pretty legit. And I believe they're on sale for another two days at 20% off. They're nice stuff. Oh, and these high tide hoodies. I ordered like six of them. They're like the most comfortable thing. Great hoodies. All right, so look at this water. That's like gnarly bog stained Northern Minnesota river water right here. And up there is a little bit more clear. So there's a little bit of a, I mean, this is all this river water dumping. You can kind of see where there's the lift bridge. So this is all river water coming out here. It's stained, it's darker. And up here we have more like Lake Superior water. I don't know. If you find a mud line, you don't automatically get bit by any means, so. But maybe we can get lucky. I think it was two springs ago, we were literally like right in this exact position and hooked like one of the more beautiful cam loops I've ever seen. Got it in the boat, it was a great fish. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, look at this. Look at that water there. Look at that water there. There's a, look at that, dirty and clean. Once we get the edge here. Okay. Yeah, once you get the edge, you better, better hang on to your hats. Good triple. Let's go. How's your speed? About uh, 2.5. 100 more feet. Yeah. Come on, fish. Those baits are right in the zone right now. Something's got to go. Boys in blue down there patiently waiting. When is the solid smelt run? Don't cohos follow the smelt? Yeah, they do. I, the smelt run's gonna pick up here pretty quick. I'd say in the next couple weeks, it's gonna get, gonna get pretty smelty. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, kind of all your fish will relate to the smelt a little bit. There, you can see this mud line back there now. Does the time of day matter? For cohos, I feel like right away in the morning is best. Like, you know, before sunrise even, that can be very, very good. Um, for like lake trout, my favorite time for lake trout is 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's always the best. Um, for browns, I feel like kind of later in the day can be good too, like that, you know, especially this time you're in the water so cold, it's so cold. Like right now can be can be good like if you guys are fishing down in wisconsin like trolling the shorelines down there like those browns push up tight to shore um they they get pretty active when the in the afternoons when that water warms up but my favorite time i don't know if i could pick one time to go fishing you know it'd be from 6 a.m till 10 a.m Ryan join Lake, can you recap what lures you are pulling? No problem at all. We were pulling a mix of this like four and a half inch uh, stick baits, like Phantom Lures Dagger, we have Scatter Wraps out, we have a couple Bombers out as well. So, um, 
Track guy's put his fair share of fish in the box over the over the years. I got another version of him, but he's got all the paint off, so I bought a couple more at Marine General. That's a heck of a bait, but yeah, again, just kind of like these four and a half inch style baits. Maybe we need to throw in a purple. Let's throw in a purple. It's a good looking bait. Yeah, throw him out. Yeah, inside. Outside would be too much work. Where you get those trolling trees? Superior welding and marine. 400 bucks for two trees, not a bad deal. It's like the deal of the day. Durable, solid. We pretty much break everything we look at. Haven't broke those yet. Doing good. Do you have any bay rats? I do not. I do not have bay rats. Heard about them, I think I've seen them. Good looking bait. Do you run different snaps or swivels depending on what you are fishing for? Lake trout on a downer compared to coho on lead core, spoon for sticks. Ooh. Better grab a cup of coffee for this answer. You guys ready? All right, one sec. Gotta have your horn. Honk, honk. What else we got in here? We got a bunch of goodies in here. We got reels, we got lead core. Snap weights, little radio action. All right, what'd I come in here for? Right here. All right. All right, let's go over this. Swivels, this is a, this is a pretty, uh, in, comp, I, I'm gonna try to keep this as simple as it can get but it may be a little bit complicated. All right. That's the swivel box. These right here are like $20 for like 10 of them, but like $2 a swivel, but it's worth it. And you gotta use quality swivels. So right now we are pulling, we are pulling stick baits on mono unless that stick bait is out of tune and rolls up to the surface and twirls around we're gonna have no line twist we don't have to worry about it your stick bait swims everything's fine and dandy nice and happy no line twist where it gets confusing is or not confusing where it gets a little more technical is if you start using spoons um look at these two I try to get this planer board off thinking hard about it too boys got her yeah. Take two hands. <laughs> boys in blue all right where was i um when you start using spoons so kind of general all right that's going to lead me down another rabbit hole now through mid eight, mid june i'm going to use thick baits come after june i, I, I like to switch to spoons and it, actually this guy this guy there is running the spoon right now. So when you're using spoons, you want to use swivels, especially um, with lead core. Spoons twirl, twist in the water. You're going to get a bunch of line twists if you do not have a barrel swivel. And I prefer to use cross lock snaps at my lure. So I, I mean, this is what I use at my lure. This cross lock snaps there. Um, so I put this above where my leader's at. So, um, so on a down rigger and a spoon, yes, you want a swivel. On lead core and a spoon, yes, you want a swivel. Lead, lead core and a stick bait, no, I probably won't use a swivel. Um, I may rig it up with a swivel just if I want to switch over to a, a spoon. Um, 
this guy here. Let's reel this. Caden, you want to reel that in real quick for me? Yep. We'll show, we'll show what we got going on. So this is kind of technical. So right now, see, so look at there. That's braided line. That's 300 yards of 20 pound test. Suffix 832. Now we got a lead coming in. That gray line there is lead core. We'll keep her going here. That blue is our second color of lead. Changes color every 30 feet. Now what do we got coming? We got bright green coming in here. Put your sunglasses on, it's bright. That's mono leader. All right. Let's take this thing up front. I don't know how our audio is back here. Got it. Yep. All right, so that's all mono leader. And then, as you can see, we got our, that's my secret brown trout lure, everyone, close your eyes too. Um, but right here, we got a swivel, connecting our mono leader to our fluorocarbon leader. And that's one of those $2 swivels, but if you buy a cheap swivel, it's gonna lock up on you. And let me tell you, your lead core is more expensive than a swivel, so. I want to protect that lead as much as I can. So uh, 20 pound test, bright green line down to 15 pound test, or I think that's 17 pound. Yeah, 17 pound test fluoro. Um, so that's why we have a swivel right there down to our spoon. That spoon twirls, there's a lot of line twists that goes on if you do not have a swivel. So um, generally speaking, whenever you use a spoon, you want to have a swivel. Another ship. Busy today out here. You guys cruising. Bigger boat there. Quite a few boats up in here. Quite a few boats, quite a lack of fish. Do you use a fish hawk or similar to target thermocline temp changes for active fish when using downriggers in the summertime? Um, that's a good question. All these are good questions. Do I use a fish hawk? No, I don't. Why? Kind of primarily my style of, of fishing. Um, I don't know. That's a... That's a hard question to ask, answer. Um, hmm, why don't I? I don't know if I've ever really truly thought about why I don't. Are they effective in finding different, you know, levels of the water column and, you know, seeing what speed you're at going at down there? 100%. Like, it's a great tool. It gives you a ton of really good information. My style of fishing, I just don't. I just, I don't know. I just don't fish that deep that often. Like I, a lot of the fishing, especially trout fishing we do is like a little bit shallower and I rely on lead core and planer boards more so than down riggers. Um, but it's, I mean, it is a great tool. It provides you a lot of really awesome information. I had one on my black boat last year, the black one that we had last year. This boat's big blue, new boat. But that black boat had one fun tool i mean it's fun to you know get you absorb more more information um and it definitely I, I i know for a fact that it can help you catch more fish if you fish in that certain way i just don't fish that way that often Rob, hey Grant, hurry up and catch one already. Got to convince the wife fishing tomorrow is going to be a good idea. Rob's wife, we already got our limit. We can't catch anymore, so we took the hooks off the lures and we're just out here for the fun of it now. Rob, 
You ever buy custom painted baits? I do. I do, but the baits can get kind of expensive. I don't know, a lot of your companies are coming out with good colored baits now anyways. Like, I don't know, I guess you can define the word custom for me, but like Phantom's coming out with some good colors. Like, look at that guy. Some good looking baits in there. Bomber's putting out some good colors. Like, there's a lot of good baits out there. And I say very, you know, not many times do you have to have an exact color of lure for fishing out here. There's one spoon we have for lake trout in the summer that's, you gotta be kind of close to exact, but I've never really run into a, a stick bait out here fishing for trout and salmon that, you know, you had to have that exact color. If you didn't have that exact color, you weren't catching fish. I've seen it for walleye fishing and lake trout spoons but i don't know custom painted cranks you know 15 16 17 bucks for a stick bait gets to be a lot of a lot of cash what other questions we got gotta do something since we're not catching fish we're gonna do this again in like a week or two and we're gonna we're gonna put the smack down on them and prove to you guys that there are some fish around these parts. Today it's pretty slim pickings. We knew it though, we expected it. We're just happy to be out here enjoying the nice weather before, it's supposed to get cold next week. I'm seeing like snow in like 20s again in the mornings. Ship number two. How's our speed? What are we doing wrong here, kids? Ship number Justin, promise I'm not that expensive. Was Justin the one who asked about custom painted baits? Yes. Shoot me an email, Justin. Grant at superiorangling.com. We'll see what we got. I might have uh, one pattern I may need you to reproduce for a walleye bait for me. That's absolutely deadly on the St. Louis River. Not a question, but just wanted to say thanks for the recommendation. Traxxas system, got it mounted, and it is solid. Yeah, Traxxas is it's good stuff. These tracks are awesome. Drill them right into the fiberglass. Works well. Uh-oh, foam battery is dying quick. My mobility is going to be, be limited. I do have a phone charger, but we're going to have to stay plugged into the... USB. Again, this is kind of our trial area. We're gonna we're gonna get this uh, get this going on a a better system. There's a couple uh, and there's a device we can buy to plug into our big uh, production cameras and get some wireless mics going. Switch some camera angles live on the fly. Like we, we're gonna do this a lot better here in the weeks and months to come this is kind of our our trial trial run maybe shore casting but do you hit up Bark Bay or Cornucopia? For those that don't know, Bark Bay and Cornucopia is on the Wisconsin side, um, kind of in between Duluth and Bayfield, the Red Cliff area. I fished it a couple, I don't know, two weeks ago. It was tough. Water is so cold. 
but I do get down there. Growing up, we had a cabin in Iron River, so we'd always go to Port Wing. Grandpa's the one who got me started fishing out here. He also had a blue lund. It was a, uh, I don't know what year that was. 1970, 65, 18 footer, 135 horsepower inboard. Caught a lot of fish out of that boat. Just gotta credit, credit grandpa for uh, getting me hooked into uh, the fishing out here. How about downrigger releases? What do you recommend? Good question. I keep it simple. Let's take a trip back to the back of the boat. This is the garbage can where I keep my downrigger balls. Mountain Dew kickstarts. Can't live without them. Right here. These are the releases that I use. Audio is probably terrible back there. Those are the releases I use. Um, they're simple. You don't need to like twist the line or anything. You put the line in there once, you're done. It takes two seconds. They're easy to work in big waves, and it's just, I don't know, just simple. Never had an issue with them. That's what I prefer. This guy is ripping. Trying to catch a ship. All right, we need a fish. Again, not the ideal time of day, but we're making it work. We're enjoying ourselves. It's fun out here. It's nice out here. Beautiful Duluth, big blue water. Check us out on YouTube. Let's go to YouTube. Search Superior Angling on Sunday evening or dropping an episode where we are out here actually catching fish so you can see what can be caught out here. Um, we catch browns, we catch lakers, we catch salmon. Three different species of fish. So check us out on YouTube. Tons of content on there. Um, again, we're in the middle of our TV season right now doing 20 weeks of TV. We're on week 11 this week. So a lot of our stuff is shot and aired in the same week. So it's a good episode. A lot of fish, a lot of fun. Justin should be on the beach side. Yeah, we trolled the beach side. Nothing. Fish could be going there right now. You never know. We just wandered over here to this side. Again, there's no one right magic equation, no magic place to be, no magic lure to use. It's put in your time, have patience. You're going to have success eventually. Do you ever use cut baits for salmon? If so, how do you rig them? Not a huge cut bait fan. Um, I won't even really know what to tell you. Does it work? Yeah, but I just don't. Don't use them that much at all. Chris Volger, get it done, boys. The only thing we're getting done is going for a boat ride. Where are you guys fishing at? We are in Duluth, Minnesota on the very tip of Lake Superior. We presume there's fish in this area, but we're not 100% convinced. I'm kidding, there are salmon here. When the, 
when the log is cold like this early season, you like you're gonna have like windows or peaks throughout the day. Like for example, if you fish all day, you're probably trolling for a couple hours, nothing. Then all of a sudden, in like ten minutes, you're gonna get like three or four fish. Like you might even get it like a triple. And then it's going to be dead for two, three, four, five hours. And then boom, you're going to find an active pot of fish again. And you're going to get a double. Like that's how the bite goes this time of year. Um, as the water warms up, it gets a little bit more consistent where you can catch fish kind of, you know, slow and steady versus boom and bust. Um, but on the early season like this, it's hit, totally hit or miss. Like you catch, you catch one or two and then it's going to be dead for a while. So once that water starts to warm up, your bite really starts to stabilize and become a little bit more consistent. Right now it's, it's super cold out and definitely an inconsistent bite. What's your favorite fish to eat from Lake Superior and the recipe? My favorite fish to eat from Lake Superior has got to be a coho salmon recipe, fillet it, put it on tin foil, put it on like a smoker grill, like a Traeger or something like that, or a pit boss is what I have, and like cook it for like not very long, like skin side down, a little bit of dill, a little bit of lemon, lemon pepper, um, and cook it for like three or four minutes at like 400 degrees, and you don't need to cook it very long at all, um, but that is by far my favorite fish on Lake Superior. Nothing beats a coho salmon out of here. Their meat is so pure. There's no fat on it. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's like the color of this clip. Like, it's absolutely delicious meat. Brown trout are good, too. Browns have very nice orange meat that's almost sometimes almost more pink and orange than a salmon is, but... On a good day, how many fish will you catch? That's a good question. Um, if I came out and I fished for 10 hours, and if I went home with, or if I, not went home, if I caught eight fish, I'd be content. Like, that's not bad. You can do a heck of a lot worse, you can do a heck of a lot better, but if I average one fish an hour out here, that ain't bad some days. But then, right, other days you're trolling along and you'll have six salmon on at one time, right? Like, that's not uncommon. It happens. Or you come on here and you don't catch a, a thing. That definitely happens as well. But on average, if I come on here and I catch eight fish in a day's fishing, then it, that's not bad at all. As soon as my phone dies, we're gonna hook up. I know what's gonna happen. Are you pulling hot steel? Yeah, we got two hot steels out. That's the old standby. I'm at 15%. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Surprised no one's asked about reels yet. These are the Daiwa AccuDepths. 
in my mind, one of the most reliable reels for the money. Yeah, it'd be nice to have 30 Shimano Takotas, but rubber glove. That's nice. These AccuDups are good reels. They stand up, they're like 70 bucks. I can't see comments on my phone. You're about to die. We can plug you in though. How do you plug it in? It's not the same. You don't have this charger? No, it's the, it's a USB. Oh. What the heck is this charger? <laughs> That's for What is that? Looks like a Samsung. Wait, Let's no, see. no, 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 no. Oh, no, it's this Oh, end. it's the wrong end. iPhone changed their crap. Yeah, no, you see that? Yeah, that? Apple did. Apple's changing they, they stuff change again. It for their computer. Yeah, that's a dirty move right there. It's not USB anymore. That's for the computer. That's dirty. Well, we do not have the ability to charge a phone. Thought we did. There's got to be a phone charger in here. fire extinguisher so to fish out here you need I don't believe you need a marine radio you need flares that aren't expired you need a sound making device this applies to any Great Lakes if you're using downriggers I think you gotta have wire cutters nearby all sorts of fun stuff I don't know if any of you watching are coming to Duluth to fish tomorrow. I, I don't know. Enjoy your day. It's supposed to be nice and warm. Don't expect to come out and pound fish, although it very well could happen. I got to figure out how to see comments on my phone. I can't believe we don't have phone charger. What are we at? We're at 14. What do you got? Did somebody bring a banana? Yeah, there's probably a whole bushel of them. Is that another 219 Pro V? Yes, this is our 2020 219 Lund Pro V. Our black boat had good luck last year, that 2019. That boat caught fish. Huh? Swipe left or right. Justin, thanks, buddy. Let me see. I got nothing. Ooh, wait. Yeah, oh. I pulled the comments up. Right the other way. No, that's it shows who's watching. watching. It's weird. They should have a I got boat. nothing. Isn't that weird? I don't know why I can't see comments. What do we got there? That looks herring to me. School of herring. On Lake Superior, we have like three primary Bait fishes, smelt, whitefish, and herring. Herring is the same as like a tula bee. Same deal. Or a cisco, cisco herring, tula bee, all same thing. A um, little bit smaller in general than a, a whitefish. But primary forage around here this time of year is going to be 
smelt, um, and also like bugs. Your fish will definitely eat a bunch of bugs coming up to the surface. Your lake trout are eating like sculpins and other stuff that live on bottom. Eel pout. All right, right here, this ranger over here is using a mast. Right there. There's a question earlier about inland boards versus mast. So again, just two different ways to get boat baits out away from your boat. No one right way to do it. I prefer to use inline boards or Mr. Ranger prefers to, prefers to use a, a mast. Again, whatever works for you and what you have confidence and are comfortable with is best. What do you think, there's something on the outside? Well, I keep wondering, it's back a little bit, but... No. I we'll get him in a few miles. Yeah. I think we're good. We would have heard drag rip board, I didn't hear anything. Do we like fix or adjustable rod holders? Like our, again, we have Trax Tech ones too, um, that they have like a pin here and you can adjust the angle of these, but I rarely ever adjust the angle. So something fixed like this is, is good. Again, it's it's all what you can afford and what you're comfortable with, right? Like I know, I think Trax Techs are over double the price of these. So if you guys are looking to save some money and get a good, you know, functional rod holder system, like that's the way to go. They're all at good angles. I mean, I really won't change much on these at all. Slow going out here, Duluth, Minnesota. Beautiful day. Not much fish to be seen. Are we running flag boards? No, I, uh, here, let's sneak in here real quick. You guys think you're going to see a bunch of salmon in there, don't you? Nothing. All right. Um, no, I don't. We're not running flag boards. Let me see if, no, none of these are set up with it. I think one or two of those out, like, oh, yeah, this inside guy here. His flag is down. So I do have a couple that I rigged up with like the flag the flag will drop if there's any more tension on it and i primarily use those inside the st louis river like we've been trying to here in Duluth too and it's a shallow um trolling bite a lot of times and you get weeds and stuff on there so that's when that tattle flag is nice it flag drops if there's any more tension on there um, but out here you don't need it so we pretty much just set our drags and our reels to click if uh, a fish is on or any more weight is on the on the line tattle flakes are nice but uh in my from my perspective they're more for like walleye style fishing when you're in all your shallow and weeds and stuff like that
Oh, there's a nice fresh sandwich from probably a couple weeks ago. Look at that. That could be dinner if we don't catch a fish. Are the boys in blue from Striker? No. Following them on the side of the road because we wanted to run six lines. <laughs> uh, Apparently they're not good luck, so we should drop them back off. Well, it's Aaron and Caden. They uh, join us quite often on filming adventures. Caden is the one that put the smackdown on the Lake Nipping and Lake Trout through the ice on that episode. Caden's just now recovering from minor frostbite on the hands. <laughs> and then that's Aaron. You'll see him on this Sunday's episode. He's the one who was reeling in that brown trout and it went through. We haven't retired the net yet. That hole right there. See that hole right there? Check out this Sunday's episode. You're gonna see the luckiest. You're gonna see the luckiest fish alive. Get caught, get netted, come unhooked, and swim through that hole and gone. I still can't believe it to this day. Like the chances of getting through that hole, whatever. I I get it, but to come unhooked and then go through the hole. Unbelievable. Not much action. What's our phone at? 13%. We're doing pretty good. We can push in shallow. Throw on the Wonder Bread that works good on that side. Which Wonder Bread are we talking about? The Ranowski? All right, let's do this. Next three comments, pick a lure and we're gonna throw it out. Someone wants this Wonder Bread to put it out. What else do we wanna see? Wonder Bread's gone. What else do you guys want? What's that? Do the inside. I love the disappointment when you talk about the one that got away. Yeah, well, let me tell you, I was running camera for that. I wish you could have, wish I would have been on camera to see the re my reaction on my face. Unbelievable. It's a nice brown too. Bright orange scatter app. I'm pretty sure we got two of those out. But actually, no, we don't have this color. All right, let's go here. Let's put this guy on the inside. Inside board on Caden's side. So we're gonna have to reel in the lead core first. Try to reel that one in first. Yeah.
black with white stripes. Black with white stripes. Or it's black with white stripes. I don't see it. Brad's bait. I don't see a Brad's. Joining, we got a couple joinings out. I'm not too confident it's a lure issue right now. I'm more so at this time of day and being in the right place at the right time, which we are obviously not right now. Whoa, looky there. That makes me want to go 50 miles offshore. Um, all right. Marine General in Duluth had these colors the other day that look unbelievable. It's a good looking bait. Hot steel, we got two or three of those out. I'm just starting to think the boys in blue are bad luck. going on there we, go. there we are good to go Also, I'm going to touch on too much safety. Safety out here is a big component, especially when water's this cold. Onyx life jackets, can't go wrong. You don't even know you're wearing them. Auto inflate when you hit the water. We have our throwable right there, ready to go. We're safe. It's gonna be dark out here pretty quick and we're still not gonna have a fish. Just roll till the sun comes up, I guess. Ripping. It's like, my, it's like the boat Grandpa had. Those things fish well. Didn't have a live else. Every time we catch a fish, it go right into a black garbage bag. You sit there and bake in the sun for five hours. You get home and clean it. It just smelled awful. Memories of the old days. Grandpa caught big fish though. You should see on his wall at his house. He used to come out and fish out here on a 12 footer. He's got a couple of pictures holding up a couple of 15, 20 pound trout. He used to put in a bluebird landing on the North Shore. He's caught a lot of big fish in his day with not a lot of technical gear back then. Copper spoon. A downrigger, 9.9 .9 Johnson on the back. That's how they used to do it. I 
All right, we're switching up some lures here. We're gonna sign off here pretty shortly. Maybe we can end up with one. Check out our YouTube channel. This Sunday's episode is actually catching fish out here. So you'll have something to watch hit the, hit the net. We're gonna be doing this again soon in the near future, so stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. We are signing off. Have a good weekend and good luck fishing.